So today I'm going to talk about how to brighten and add contrast to just the irises in the eyes of a portrait photograph you might have taken. So Lightroom gives us a lot of tools to be able to um, do this the way that we want to. A lot of people do it in Photoshop. Um, I actually like doing it in Lightroom. I think it's easy, quicker. So Lightroom has a local adjustment brush that I'm going to use and there's a preset in there that actually is for brightening the iris um, or enhancing it as they call it. Um, but I don't actually like to use that. It is a good starting point if you're not quite sure where to start, but I have a couple of other sliders that I like to use too. So that's what I'm going to show you guys today. So I have a set of portrait images that I've shot. I'm going to grab one of them and I'm going to hit D on my keyboard to bring it into the develop module. Um, and I am going to zoom in, um, right over her eyes and then grab my local adjustment brush. So the local adjustment brush is the top right, um, tool, the far right tool in the toolbar over here in the corner. I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up my adjustment brush and a lot of these sliders look very similar to the basic panel. So make sure that you've actually opened up the tool um, because we have exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, all those things that we normally have in the basic panel in here too. So one thing that you really need to do before you get started doing anything in this local adjustment brush is you need to make sure that you've reset your sliders back to zero because this brush is sticky. So whatever you've done on a previous photo will be remembered on the slider position here. So if you actually double click the word effect up in the top left hand corner of the panel, uh, that will actually reset all of those sliders, take away any color filters you might have put on top, anything like that. So we reset it back to zero, and now we're at a clean slate to begin editing just the irises here in the photo. So let me show you what the iris preset will do. So if you click up here in the custom um, effect drop down menu, you click on that. There's a lot of options in here. Iris enhance is one of them. If I click on that and then I draw on just her iris, does just a little bit of um, saturation and exposure and a little bit of clarity. And I can do that on both of our irises. It does a pretty good job. Um, I like to do it just a little bit of a different way. So what I'm gonna do is actually um, control Z, command Z on the keyboard, get rid of those. And I'm going to change the sliders how I normally do it. Um, so that was a good starting point. That's great if you're not sure exactly where to go. Um, but I actually prefer to do it a slightly different way. Um, so I'm going to double click each of my sliders here that will reset them back to zero. And I'm going to start by just bringing up my exposure a little bit. I usually bring it up to between a quarter and a half stop over zero, um, just to overexpose those eyes just a little bit more than the rest of the frame. And then I'll actually bring up the contrast slider just a little bit too. Usually I bring these up almost to the same position, um, far from zero, even though the number scale is a little bit different because contrast doesn't go in stops. It goes in points. So I usually bring those up close to, um, usually contrast is around 10 to 15 or 20, depending on what eye I'm working on. Um, and then I also bring up saturation, but I usually don't go as far as um, the iris preset goes because contrast takes care of some of that saturation for me. And I like the way that it does it a little bit more. Um, then I also bring up the sharpness just a little bit, um, just to crispen, crispen up those eyes just a little bit more. And then I can grab my paintbrush over here. I want to make sure that I have a feather and flow of 100, which will give me a nice soft edge brush. Um, the size should just be whatever it needs to be to cover the entire width of the iris so that you can kind of draw in a circle around her pupil. The important thing here is you don't want to draw on the pupil because if you brighten up the pupil, it looks really weird and fake and people will know you did it. So just stick to the colored part of the eye, the iris. And the other thing to think about is when you're brushing, you want to make sure that you also don't brighten the catch light in the eye. So that's something that that little bright area that is reflecting back into her eye. Um, in this case, it's the sunset sky behind me when I was photographing that's reflecting right back into her eye and creating this beautiful bright catch light. Catch lights are wonderful. We really need them in portrait photography to make sure that people's eyes don't look dead. Um, but you don't want to brighten it because then it's kind of obvious that you also brighten the eye because that exposure value of that um, catch light should be reflecting back the same exposure value that you've shot the picture at. So I'm going to go ahead and click and draw on the iris. I'm not sure if these are exactly the right numbers I need my sliders to be at yet but I can see what change is occurring here. So I'm just drawing slowly just to try to make sure that I don't in, 
encroach on that pupil or draw over the catch light either. Um, if you accidentally spill and you just need to clean it up, like if I, woo, I just brighten that whole catch light and the whole pupil, see how that's like a little bit too much? Um, what I can do is hold the alt or the option key on my keyboard and that will change my plus brush to a minus brush. You can see before it's a plus in the middle of that circle and after it's a minus. So now I'm actually, uh, I can subtract a part of my um, selection. So I'm just gonna click over where I uh, sort of fell off here um, and erase the part of the adjustment that I don't wanna keep. So now I have a nice fine tuned adjustment. Um, I think I'm brushed in the right spot. So now the important thing here, I want to make sure that my sliders are set to a good spot. So I might try a little bit more exposure, a little bit more contrast, a little bit less um, saturation or more saturation, just kind of play with that. The goal here is to get their eyes looking how you saw them. You don't want to go overboard because if you go overboard, they look fake. It's like Barbie eyes. We don't want that. Um, so I want to set this just to the point where I think it makes it look more, um, enhanced like we're more engaged with the eyes because that's the important part of the portrait but i actually really want to zoom out um, so i'm going to go back to the fit view and then i'm going to close out of my adjustment by clicking the done bar on my toolbar down at the bottom and i want to see what that looks like so i want it to not go too far and the best way to be able to tell is if you zoom out and look at the picture as a whole um, see whether you can tell whether you change the eyes and then I like to click the Y key on my keyboard, which will show me a before and after of the picture just before um, I made that adjustment. Uh, and you wanna make sure that the eyes that you've changed look realistic. So this is super important. What I do sometimes is also I'll have a friend come over or um, somebody else to look at the photograph, make sure that it doesn't look like that I changed anything. The important part is if they see and they're like, oh wow, you made the eyes look great. <laughs> it's probably a little bit too much. The whole point is you don't want them to know you did it. You want it to just look like you captured a really beautiful portrait. So this is a pretty easy way to get going with um, enhancing those irises in your photographs. And I think that it's a pretty clean and simple workflow. So just to recap, I usually go in I will um, brush on the photo just on the iris. I don't want to encroach on the pupil or the catch light because I want it to remain looking realistic. I'll increase the exposure, usually between a quarter and a half stops. Sometimes you can go more depending on the lighting scenario, but it really needs to stick to something that looks realistic. Then I'll increase the contrast. I'll increase the saturation just a little bit and I'll increase the sharpness. And usually that gets me to a really nice effect that's just brightening, sharpening, adding a little bit of um, saturation and contrast. It's a really nice um, technique that I use on a lot of portrait photos. Not every portrait needs it, but it's a really good way to, um, good trick to have in your bag. Um, so if you guys uh, have any questions about what we've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this photo, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. And um, subscribe if you want to learn more about Lightroom, Photoshop, anything else that we're doing over here.